morning. Good morning. Good morning. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for bringing us all together here today, Lord, that we can hear your word, that you fill this room with the Holy Spirit and touch our hearts, Lord, that we have an understanding that we didn't have before. Lift us all up. Encourage us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 So today... I would like to talk about obedience. He gives us all the words and all the areas of our life to correct things, to move forward, yet it just doesn't seem to happen. And most of the time it's because we're not being obedient to his word. <laughs> or a clarification of his word that we could have so we'd have an understanding that we didn't have. Right? We need to stop putting God in a box of what his capabilities are. Right? We just sang songs. Do you think at any time in your life, in the world, that God said, ah, man, I missed that one. I should have fixed that one. Or, you know, how did that one get away from me? Right? Right? If you have any kind of inkling that God said that, you missed God. You didn't get what God is. You don't get who God is. Right? I am yours. Right? Did I go through life going, God, I am yours. Show me. Teach me. Tell me. And then he does, and I go, nah, never mind. I don't want to do that. He's shown me all these things. Mm -hmm. So we'll go into these words. Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. He will. What does that mean? That means I have to stop trying to do it. I need to do what he wants me to do, not what I want to do. Because what I want to do always ends me up in trouble until I practice so much of what he wants me to do that that becomes what I want to do. That's what I've done most of my life. As I followed whatever directions were handed to me and stayed with that. And then I got it so ingrained in me that I didn't want to make the change. Huh? Don't, don't move that asterisk. Don't move that chair. It has to stay right there. I'm ingrained with it. I can't have that change. Being a man of God, is that my first acknowledgement? When people meet me, is it, hi, uh, I'm from the streets of Lynn and I'm a drug addict? Or is it, hi, I'm Chris, I follow Jesus Christ. Is there something going on in your life? that we can help you with. Someone just had to make a phone call to get something. They just made a phone call. But before they were done with the phone call, they found out that there was hurt on the other end of the line that someone died and needed a prayer. So do you think that the phone call was because of their brilliant idea to make the phone call, and did God create something here this morning so that they would make the call to pray for this person that God needed prayer for? As I practice that, then I get to say, God needed me to make that phone call. That's why this was missing. Because God didn't make the mistake for us to not have something. He created that time to make something happen for His will. Matthew 22, verse 37. Now, here's Jesus. They're coming at Him. They're trying to catch Him in lies. Right? He's Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's coming. Most Christians... If Jesus walked up to them in the street, they wouldn't know who he is. Because they don't walk the way he walks. He wants them to, but you'd be like, this guy's out of place. This guy's strange. 
Let's kind of, we wouldn't all go, oh man, there's God. Wow, beautiful. That's what they did to him. Here it is. Right? Jesus said to him, you shall love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Right? All your mind. Are you troubled today? Well, you're not following Jesus. <laughs> you're following the trouble. <laughs> he loves you so much that you don't have to be troubled with anything anymore. Only if you allow that trouble to take over your life and make you run down the street with the trouble. Rather than being with Jesus. And that's how I can say people wouldn't know who Jesus is. It's peace and love. We don't get that. Most of us have been so destroyed by the world that we don't get what love is. And when it shows up on the doorstep, we don't know what to do with it. John 14, 15. <coughs> if you love me, keep my commandments. Obey me. Did you obey the baker? He made a mighty cream pie that you ought not to eat. <coughs> but you're going to defy what everybody says and go eat that pie. If it brings you to incarceration, would you be obedient to it? I did with everything else in my life. Will I do that in the name of Jesus? Nah, nah, nah. Not in the name of Jesus. Come on, Jesus wouldn't want me in jail. Ask Paul. <laughs> right? We talk about it all the time. What is your obedience to God? He's faithful to you in every way. <clears throat> Can you show up on church on Sunday? Can you go bring a friend to church? You found the greatest thing. Right? You'll bring him to a dance. You'll bring him to a movie. You'll bring him to the fireworks. Will you bring him to church? I found something. I found Jesus down the street. His word is here and he's going to free you from everything you've been in. All you've got to do is be obedient. I don't know if I can be obedient to God. Well, I've been obedient to sin and liked it. Why? Because that's what I practice. Now I practice my obedience to God and I begin to like it. I begin to have an understanding that if a phone call is made, that a prayer is on the end of it, that God had that moment in mind. Not me. I wanted something that I wanted on the other end of the phone call. God had what he wanted on the other end of the phone call, and we could have ignored it, or we can follow through in the will of God. Our choice. Free will. John 15, 19. 15, 9, rather. Sorry, 15, 9. As the Father loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. No, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with that. What does Jesus want from me? He wants me to love him, and he wants to love me. I ain't having it. <laughs> I just ain't having it. That stuff has wrecked me. The people that said they loved me destroyed me. God's only going to wreck me even more. He's going to want me to do things I don't want to do, like not get high, like go to work, like become responsible in my life. He's going to want those things. I don't want nothing to do with that. I want freedom. <laughs> freedom to what? Freedom to be obedient to sin. I want that. I like it. And I'm standing up. I am yours. Am I really yours? <coughs> Whose am I? When I'm not doing, I'm not being obedient to God, I'm being obedient to the devil without even knowing that that's what I'm doing. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. This one's a tough one. Casting down arguments. <laughs> yeah, right. And everything in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
What? To bring it into love. Go ahead. Go outside and have an argument with someone over love. You probably will. To prove how much you love them, I'll show you how much I love you. <laughs> and then we get to like it. It becomes a way of love that we think is okay. That's all. I, if my family got together on, on any kind of occasion, if we weren't punching each other in the face, we weren't having a good time. That's what I knew. That's what I thought was right. Because I won't cast down the arguments. I want the argument. I want the fight. I don't want to submit to obedience of God. I don't want to submit to love because I don't know what that is. I've never had it until I accept his love in my life. Right? What's his love? You're here. Being here today is God's love. Just being here, leaving everything outside that door and just coming in and hearing his word about how much he loves you that he's going to give you this moment of peace while you sit here. Amen. That's his love. I want that in my life. But I want it to become obedient outside <coughs> these doors. I want it to be in my car on the way here. I want it to be in the car on the way to go visit somebody. So that when I get there, I bring them God's love and not my wrath. My personal wrath. Man, I'm learning so much. 1 John 5, verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Right? We can overcome the world. I don't care what's in your life or what's going on in your life. Overcome it. How? Through God's love. Obedience to God's love. Take any situation and turn it into God's love. See what happens. See how your life develops and changes. Man, because I thought if I brought my wrath, that was going to make it work for me. And I liked it. <coughs> Even though I ended up being the one that got beat up or kicked out or discarded or put away or ashamed or locked up, I still held on to that obedience. I didn't know God's obedience. I can have that in my heart and in my life. What a difference to be able to have. But it's being obedient to it all the time. I want to overcome all the things that the world is throwing at me. I can't on my own. Go to any of the, any of the programs out there. I need something greater than myself. Why? Because myself just grabs a hold of the misery and goes to the ride. And then I go, how come this is so miserable? How come my life is so horrible? Because I'm not going to God's love. I'm not being obedient to his laws, to what he would like me to do. I'm going to what Chris likes to do. Why? Because that's all I've practiced. Until I start to practice the other way, and then my life begins to change. And I go, wow, look at that family. We got to pray, and they've changed. We brought God into the situation, and it changed. Not because I changed it, because God changed it. Do I come to God because God can heal me? Or do I come to God because God is God? <coughs> Am I, do I have an expectation? If I believe in God, then I will no longer be addicted to anything. That's true. That's a fact. As long as you're obedient to his word. Until you go back to your will that says, I like this other stuff and I'm going there. That's how I end up back out there. I gave up his will and took mine back over. And he can't stop you. He can place a billion roadblocks along the way, but you can hop over every one of them. And we do. Until we become obedient. Unbelievable word. So simple. I'm obedient either to God or to sin. And I, I know how to be obedient to sin. I'm learning how to be obedient to God. I think.
And someone might have said that to me this morning. They're adding that God in their life to everything, right? God first, God first, God first. Everything changes. First Peter, verse 13. Therefore, grit up the loins of your mind, right? The loins of your mind. All that running around you do in your head. Shut it off. Put a girdle around it. Stop. Be sober. Being sober ain't about drinking or drugging, you know. It's about that relationship that you think is going to change the world for you. It's not happening. Why? Because God's the relationship. Not about the new car, or the new job, or the new apartment, or the new house. That's being sober-minded, putting Christ in there in sobriety of life. Him first. And rest your hopeful, your hope fully upon the grace. Fully upon grace. Rest on grace. Man, I'm forgiven. Right? I'm forgiven. Only when I ask, I have to be obedient. That is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How do I get the grace? I have to have that full belief in Jesus Christ is running my life. And I'm willing to follow it. Oh, it's so hard to follow God. Just doing all the tasks that he wants me to do to forgive and have mercy and grace for people. That's so hard. But I love to be obedient to sin because that guy over there is a jerk and I don't like him and I want to go get him. That didn't work. I don't think it worked for everybody here. But are you willing to apply God's love into every situation you have? Especially about yourself. Uh, can you be forgiven? Can you take the mistakes that you make daily and say, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry <coughs> to the person that you may have made them with, and then go to God's love and see what happens? It's so, it's so simple. This is like the simplest book I've ever read in my life. The complication is me. The complication is that I don't want to play by them rules. I said to someone this morning, you need to be obedient. They said, that ain't happening. <laughs> right? Because that's us. I'm defiant. I'm defiant to hold on to sin. I didn't know it was sin I was holding on to. I thought it was my freedom to do what I'd like to do. That's what sin is. <laughs> I want to hold on to what Christ went to that cross for. For my sin. I want the next level in life. I want the freedom of no worry. I can have no worry. I choose not to. Worry's a sin. Confusion is a sin. Why? Because I'm not believing that God is the truth and that Christ went to the cross so that I don't have to have those issues in my life. That makes it a sin because I'm not believing that Christ can remove that from me. I have to pay attention to the world. I have to the devil has made me pay attention to the world in all areas of my life. And I do, and I'm pretty good at it. But there's no need of that attention. My need to be the obedience of God, and how can I bring God into any situation that I go to? It's all how I think in life. Gird up your mind. Put a girdle on your mind. Put a girdle on your thoughts. Straighten that out. It's your thoughts that's causing actions that are going to wreck your life. You don't have to go. You don't have to say. You don't have to do. You choose to. I'll go to the world. The world says, I have to go use if I don't do things this way. No, you don't. Be obedient to God 
Amen. Follow what he says, and guess what? You won't get high. Amen. You won't be down at the bakery looking for that lemon meringue pie. <laughs> You'll have your satisfaction at home with Christ. That doesn't mean you won't maybe have a slice someday. But if it's something that's pulled you out of the way of life, stop doing it. <coughs> you know the simplest things. How do I not get high? Don't pick up something that'll get you high. Right. <laughs> Don't do it. Amen. Oh, I can't do that. What do you mean you can't? I can't stop you from doing that. You have to stop yourself. God can't stop you from doing that. You have to stop yourself. How? By obedience to His Word. Amen. There it is. Sorry to tell you. It's that simple. Be obedient to God's Word, and guess what? Your life will change. Struggle as high as you want in God's Word. Go ahead. You don't have to. Run back and forth in all kinds of craziness. James chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive meekness, the implanted word, which is about to save your souls. Questions? there's the answer any question you have in your life there's the answer right stop don't allow all the filthiness in that mind to go on what's filthiness anything that's not of God the overflow of wickedness I'm telling you I am so overflown with wickedness it's, it's incredible to me to see how quick I go, I'm going to go bang that guy up. It's my first thought. Now, thank God it's not my first action anymore. Amen. It's not becoming an action anymore. But I go through this battle. Someone's doing something to somebody in my family. I'm going. Until I have to calm down and listen to his word and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And then things change. Right? With meekness, the implanted word, right? To calm down and say, listen, I'm about as big as a pebble. <laughs> I'm about as strong as a drop of water. There's nothing I can do, but if I go to God, the world can be fixed. Anything in my life, I give it to God. Man, we can save souls. We can get people into heaven. By our actions and them going, man, I want some of that love. I don't even know what it is, but I want some of that. Give me some of that. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Here's the big part. Deceiving yourselves. We got any, ma we got any master manipulators in the room? <laughs> Guess who you're manipulating? You. You're convincing yourself that sin is okay. You're convincing yourself the way of sin is the way out. You're convincing yourself that that's okay in obedience to God. He'll let me get away with it today. Who's doing it? You. To who? Yourself. I didn't say it. He said it. He told me this this morning. Because I need to hear that. Because I'm doing it to myself. There's a way out. Verse 23, 24. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. I look at me and say, hey, man, I'm all right today. I'm not doing those things I used to do, so my life's pretty good. No, I don't have to go love that person. I don't have to just try to bring someone to church. I don't have to try to explain to someone about Jesus Christ. I can sit back. God's taking care of me. Life's pretty good. I don't need to be a doer. It says here you do, but 
I don't, I don't need to be obedient to that. What do I need to be obedient to that for? I'm doing everything else right. <laughs> 24. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So I come to church and I go, oh, God, you filled me. You love me. And then I step outside the doors, and that part of life goes away, and I become the person that I knew. Not the person that I knew in here, the person I practice out there. The person that I knew in here doesn't exist yet. Why? Because I'm not a doer. I'm a hearer. I can spout scripture all over the place, but I can't live it. I can tell you, the person that's done the worst thing to you in your life, forgive them and love them and your life will change. It's not happening. I fought that for years. I fought that for years. And when I accepted the fact that I'm as bad as they are to someone in life, that I could forgive them and it gave me peace in my heart, man, I don't have to hold on to that anymore. I became a doer of his word. And then I walked away from that and I went and did other things that I should have been doing God's will and I did my will and my life became wreckage again. When someone meets me and I greet them and they get to know me, hi, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. The first thing out of me is God. Or do they meet me and I say to them, I'm an addict. It's about me. And I know God. God became third. Third in line. So that means any time I want to bring God into my life, I have to go backwards to bring him forward so that someone can get to meet him rather than them meeting him immediately through me. That means I'm not going to give an answer of his, I'm going to give an answer of mine, and then maybe think of something of his. I'm poor. Hi, I'm poor. I have nothing. But I know God. <coughs> I'm a builder. I'm a carpenter. I'm a roofer. I'm great. And I'm self-proclaimed. And I know God. God's over here. <coughs> I'm over here. I'm an I'm a I'm a I'm a. Right? God's the I am, not me. But I am the one that's professing. I'm a survivor. Man, I love that song. I'm a survivor of Christ. Christ is why I survive. There we go. Now God's first. Right? I'm not surviving. I'm being obedient to his word. I'm making that change. I want my life to be so different than it ever was. And it's beginning to be because as I follow his word and become obedient to it, the obedience of sin starts to look foreign to me. I don't go there first. I may think of there first, and then I girdle it up, and I go sober-mindedly into his word. That's what he just taught me. I am a man of God who brought me out of all those things that I just said I was. Because all of that was self-proclamation, all of that was about me, and God became second. God has to be first in order for what? Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I'm doing all these great things, but I'm still unworthy. I'm un I hate myself still. I'm having troubles. I'm, I'm still thinking about getting high. 
Why? Because I'm not doing it in the name of God. God gave me the skills to be a roofer. God gave me the skills to be a singer. God gave me the skills to be able to drive. Some people he's given the skills to know what a computer is. Not me. <laughs> but God, what? His perfect law. What's his perfect law? Obedience. What's the perfect thing in obedience? Love. That's what we just read. Love. As my Father loved me, I also loved you. <clears throat> Abide in my love. Don't you know you owe me money? <laughs> Don't you know I should have this job, this car, this relationship? Hey man, I love you, and if you got a job, I'd love to have it. If you don't, you got the money you owe me, you don't have the money, it's okay. We're good. I love you. God will fulfill that money that you owe me. It's awesome. I, you don't even have to pay me, because watch, watch what God does. He's going to give me tenfold over here. Watch. <laughs> watch. Why? Because I believe that. <laughs> I'm obedient to that. Oh, man. God's love. God's love. Nothing greater. Amen? Amen. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words, Lord, that you lift us up and show us every moment, every time, every inch of your love today, that we walk, we share it, we give it, we show it, Lord. Lift us up, cover us up, bless us up in your love. If anybody here hasn't received you, or anybody that's listening, now's the time, now's the place. Repeat this quietly in your own heart after me. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. Lord, you know who said that. Touch them. Touch them with your love. Let it flow through them like a warmth they've never had in their life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.